7B2, timed item for 915, discussion and possible action regarding the public and the Board of Supervisors' comments to the Harris Quarry Draft EIR. Um, this is to the draft EIR only, it's not to the project? That's correct. And uh, Mr. Hall. Yes, uh, first I'll give a brief introduction on what today's meeting uh, is about, then turn it over to Nash Gonzalez to give a brief uh, presentation on the project itself as well as the history of the project. And then Leonard Charles uh, will summarize the findings in the environmental impact report. Um, I'm anticipating maybe 10 minutes for the staff presentation in total on this. First of all, I want to emphasize what you just did, and this is board and public comment on the draft environmental impact report. This is not a hearing to approve or deny the project. This is not a hearing to take comments on do you support or not support the project. It's on the adequacy of the environmental document prepared by Leonard Charles and Associates. The project itself that was analyzed is a proposed quarry expansion processing plant zoning ordinance amendment to allow the processing uh, with a use permit in the rangeland zoning district as well as a variance to the height for the processing equipment. The Planning Commission uh, took public comment as well as provided their own comment. They took public comment on January 17th and February 7th. They offered their comments on February 7th. I trust that the board has uh, the minutes from both the January 17th, which was attached to the original staff report, as well as the February 7th minutes, which just came out on Friday. Um, comments are to focus on the adequacy of the draft EIR and not on whether one supports or objects to the project. Also, the board does not need to deliberate on whether or not they agree or disagree with any particular speaker. That's the job of the consultant to take those comments and respond to each and every one of those comments in the final environmental impact report. It's anticipated that that final <coughs> environmental impact report will be before the Board of Supervisors in late spring or early summer. At that time, uh, if the board certifies the environmental impact report, the board could take an action on the ordinance amendment. I want to emphasize that certification of the EIR is not necessarily mean that the pro approval of the project. Um, we've got uh, examples, or an, an example at least, uh, with Vichy Springs uh, Resort, where they had proposed a general plan amendment in a subdivision. The environmental impact report was found adequate. However, the board denied uh, the application itself. So you can certify an EIR and approve a project. You can certify an EIR and deny a project. It's just, do you have adequate information upon which to assess the environmental impact uh, inv environmental impacts of that project and take an action on the project? If the ordinance is, is ultimately approved by the Board of Supervisors after certification of the EIR, uh, then the use permit and variance would be uh, brought before the Planning Commission. The use permit and variance are necessary for the quarry and the processing plant. If appealed, then that would come before the Board of Supervisors. You, uh, in your agenda, Exhibit A shows the projected timelines. If there's anyone in the audience who would like a copy of the staff report or the timelines or the Planning Commission minutes of February 7th, Nash Gonzalez can make those available and maybe you can just put them up here at the front table, Nash. Um, with that, I'll turn it over to Nash Gonzalez to give a brief history of the project as well as to go into a little bit more detail of what the project is, only so that we can focus then on the environmental impact report. Okay, before we do that, Supervisor Smith, you have a comment? Yes, thank you. Uh, to uh, Mr. Hall, I'm reviewing your memo dated December 11th with respect to the timeline. Is that still the timeline? It did change from December 11th, so okay. the more recent one is, is uh, more accurate. Can you, for the record, just uh, go over what the changes are? I don't have the December 11th in front of me, so I'd be going by memory. I think what we did is we, we had, in error, we had the ordinance amendment scheduled for discussion by the Planning Commission and the, and the Board in January and February. We decided that it was uh, because of some noticing issues and to create less confusion was to defer the discussion on whether or not the Planning Commission supported the ordinance amendment to a later meeting focused solely on the adequacy of the environmental impact report in our January and February hearings. And that's the only change you recall? 
there might have been a date change. Uh, the the overall timeline did not change. There might have been something okay. internal, but the, the real substance was the issue of the comment, Planning Commission comments to the ordinance amendment, and we felt that it was more appropriate to do that outside of, of these discussions on adequacy of the EIR because it would just get confusing of are we talking about the project and support of the project or are we supporting talking about adequacy of the EIR. So we want to focus just on the issue today of adequacy of the environmental impact report. Thank you. Is that all, Supervisor? Yeah. Okay. Okay, continue. Thank you, Ray. I think uh, Ray pretty much summarized uh, the timelines here. And Ray is correct. Those were the only changes that were made in the timelines. This draft EIR has been prepared for this proposed quarry expansion that, again, is going to take a look at uh, the environmental issues. And again, the purpose of today's meeting is for both the public and the Board of Supervisors to provide comments to Mr. Charles, who's here today, to take in those comments. And again, it is for the purpose of adequacy of the EIR. Comments provided by the public and the Board of Supervisors are going to be recorded today, and the comment period extends through this Friday. Um, again, Leonard Charles will incorporate all of these comments, put them into the final EIR for the Board's consideration, which will be brought back at a later date. Uh, and again, those uh, timelines are summarized in the, in the attached uh, flowchart. Um, as in the the attached uh, timeline uh, to the staff report, the Planning Commission is also going to have an opportunity to hear the proposed ordinance amendment at a later date. Uh, we've uh, placed May of this year in there tentatively, but that's, uh, uh, again, a tentative date. So once upon the certification of the EIR, the Board of Supervisors would take final action on the ordinance amendment. And again, this is anticipated to take place in June of this year. Just a brief history, in August of 2005, it was determined that an EIR would be required for the proposed project. Uh, Leonard Charles and Associates was selected by the Board of Supervisors to prepare the EIR for the quarry expansion. And on December 5th, 2006, a scoping session was held both in Willits and in Ukiah to allow for public agencies as well as the public to uh, submit comments to the EIR consultant, which identified areas of concern, which allowed him to move forward in the preparation of the EIR. Now, just quickly summarizing the project itself, existing operations at this point include clearing, grubbing, and stripping and stockpiling of topsoil, which occurs incrementally on the site. The rock is loosened and uh, uh, removed from the quarry face using bulldozers and loaders, transported to crushers on site and screeners, then stockpiled. Haul trucks currently pick up material and transport to facilities inside the city of Willits. These facilities are located at 352 Franklin Avenue, and the material goes there for washing. The material is then <laughs> transported to 291A Shell Lane for manufacturing into concrete under the name NorCal Recycled Rock and Aggregates. The project is proposing, over the life of the project, to expand the quarry from approximately 11 and a half acres to 46.3 acres, a proposed expansion of 34.8 acres. The applicant estimates that mining, that the mining area contains approximately 18,270,000 cubic yards of rock and it would take at least 90 years to remove this amount of material. So the operator has requested an end of life term which would allow to extract until all the material is mined. This expansion would occur in three phases. Phase one, the mining to expand this area north and west, uh, maintaining the current quarry floor. Uh, phase two would, uh, and excuse me, and this first phase would be